Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Kristen Hildebrand. She's the Warren County Extension Agent for Horticulture. Good morning, Kristen. Good morning, Joanna. Now, Kristen, today we're going to talk a little bit about trees. Yes. And how it's getting cooler and people might want to get out into the woods. Yeah, they actually might want to take a little walk around their neighborhood or out in the forest if, if you're up for hiking. Um, right now is a good time to see all the different structures that we have with our Kentucky trees. Uh, and it's also a good educational moment, especially if your kiddos have a leaf collection that they're doing. There's a lot of different trees that we have here in Kentucky and they're all unique in their own different way. And so one of the things that we teach um, too with our Master Gardener program here is that we want to teach them different botany. And so a lot of times if you look at different trees, I mean, there's just a vast a diversity of trees that we have. And so um, I kind of wanted to show some of the examples that we have and then tell you about a resource that we have here at the office that can be helpful. But a lot of these trees um, can be deciduous or they can be evergreen, they stay green all year. And then if you look, take a closer look at the actual leaf uh, patterns and structures, even the shapes of leaf, they're very uh, different in their own way. So if you if you look at maples, we have so many different kinds of maples here in Kentucky. But when with some of the maples, you can actually look on the undersides. Uh, if the underside is a little bit grayish or more silvery looking, then you know that that's a silver maple. Um, other times you can take a look at the petiole, which is the stem that's connected to the actual leaf itself and if it's um, like red in color you know that that's a red maple um, other times you can take a closer look at the actual shape of the the maple itself uh, depending on how many lobes that it has most of the time you know sugar maples are going to have five lobes uh, red maple is going to have like three so it just really depends on some of those uh, types the maples to be able to identify it so there's one example and then if you look towards the the red bud um, that we have here on the set that what's really unique about it is that it alternates on the actual uh, stem itself or the branch. So you can see, you know, some things that alternate are going to be left to right, and then it's also going to have more of a heart-shaped leaf to it. So it's a pretty unique identifier to the red bud, and we have a lot of those here uh, throughout the state. Um, but those are things that you can look at. Other things that you can take a look at are um, the buds. And so sometimes some of the buds can be pretty sharp, the leaf buds. Um, and those can be very, very helpful in your identification process. Um, but there's a lot of other things that you can look for too. Like um, with a lot of the ashes here in Kentucky, I know that, you know, emerald ash borers coming into our community here, but you know, the bark structure is really easy to identify it because it almost like has upside down V's on it. So that's one way that you can identify an ash. And then um, what's unique about the ashes also is that they're um, opposite. So usually dogwoods, um, ashes, and then um, the maples are gonna be that way. So that's one of the other things that you can look for with the ashes that's a unique identifier. Um, one of the things I like to think about that's also pretty unique in the winter time is the sycamore. And usually you can tell that white unique bark and it's just, you're like, okay, as soon as I see it around, you know, any kind of um, water, it's gonna be a sycamore. And so not just the bark, but you can also look for um, any type of fruit that may be on the actual tree. I know you and I get asked a lot of times to identify trees. And so if we can see the fruit, that's also very helpful. And so some things uh, might have fruit on it more in the spring of the year, other times it may be the fall. It just kind of depends on that actual tree itself. So um, one of the things I wanted to mention that we have available here at the Extension Office that's really nice is this Identifying Forest Trees of Kentucky. And this is a free resource that if you're wanting to, you know, learn more about Kentucky trees that are here in our state, then that's a really good resource to pick up. And there's a really handy guide to it in the beginning that kind of walks you through some of the things that we talked about with the leaf, the actual leaf shape it is. So it kind of gives you a really good walk through of things to look for. And it'll probably bring some awareness to you that you never even thought possible. So if anybody's interested in coming to pick up this resource, we would want them to stop by our extension office. We're located on Russellville Road here in Bowling Green, and we'd be happy to share the guide and tell us, you know, let us know if this has been helpful for you too. All right, Kristen. Well, thanks for the information. And if you're interested in picking up one of those guides, maybe starting your own family leaf collection, this would be very helpful to do that. Just make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.